yesterday to get to the point where I could record that a done along. Oh, no. Okay. No, I did it. I, I still haven't got a version that I'm prepared to send in, but it's got to happen today because I got to get on to the other tracks. <laughs> well, actually, we, we did it one, two, three. We did one take and that was it. But, oh, you know, we did, good for you. We did one run through and then one take and we said, it ain't going to get any better and we just well, posted it. That's what I'm about. I'm up to. It isn't going to get any better. So I hope that by the time we get to Rosh Hashanah, my voice is improved. But boy, it sounded like I was, I had a throat full of gravel. <clears throat> anyway, we had fun doing it. So if you haven't done it, you know, give it a whirl. It's oh, fun. yeah. No, I, I haven't. Uh, I, I wiped out the uh, trial run. I'm going to, after this, I'm going to uh, try to get back to the uh, arrangements that enabled me to record it in the first place. But, oh, my heavens, uh, getting those um, um, headphones to work was unbelievable. Okay, new source sheet. Zowie. <laughs> okay, so as I said, we are going to uh, to do uh, talk about uh, learn more and more about less and less. Um, <laughs> by that I mean we're going to look at this not just one sentence in uh, this week's Torah reading, but one word. Oh, actually, I take that back. It's two words. All right. And the first source from Deuteronomy 29. Concealed act concerned the Lord our God, but overt acts it is for us and our children never to apply all the provisions of this teaching. So I'm looking at the words lanu ulavanenu. Okay. What do you notice about them? Got little dots over it. The little dots over them. So we're going to talk about these dots. Has anybody um, ever discussed these dots before? Yeah, but I can't remember what we said. Oh, so I, I can say anything I want, right? <laughs> uh, <You> bet. <clears throat> All right. Um, I don't know if I want to say these dots, you know, have created a lot of discussion uh, in in the uh, with the interpreters and the uh, different rabbinic sources over the years. Um, but they have created discussion. Actually, throughout the Torah, there are 10 instances where we have these dots above different words. Um, and I've, uh, I have, what, uh, three others here that we'll look at just briefly. Um, but first, we'll look at, uh, the, you know, stick with our, our sentence here in Deuteronomy. Um, of course, when the rabbis look at these dots, there's not just one opinion, there's two. Well, Surely actually, should, more than that. No, actually, I should say not opinions. There are two, two different ways of looking at them. Um, or are these dots actually in the Torah scroll or are they in the Tikkun? Yes. Hi, Annie, it's David. Yes, they are. Okay. Hi, um, good. I just, I, I was on uh, Minion, so I just saw your messages. Say again. He's not muted. No, he <laughs> muted himself. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I muted him. <laughs> See the power? I love power. it. I love it. <laughs> Random <laughs> muting is great. <laughs> okay. So there, there are two main schools of thought 
that, uh, how to interpret what these dots mean or why they're there. Uh, one view says that these dots were given by God to Moses at Sinai. Um, so therefore, they are very much uh, divinely inspired and we have to sit and figure out why they're there and what the interpretation of what, you know, what they mean uh, and anything else that's going on. We have a, um, a source of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar saying, I don't have the exact quote, I just have his quote. It says, whenever you find the plain writing exceeding the dotted letters, you must interpret the plain writing. If the dotted letters exceed the plain writing, you must interpret the dotted letters. Okay, does that make sense? No, no. I'm not sure it makes sense to me either. But anyway, <laughs> what he's saying um, is if you look at, at the text, if the number of undotted letters exceed the number of dotted letters, the main interpretation comes from the undotted letters. If there are more dotted letters, then the main interpretation has to come from the dotted letters. Okay. So is that, does that refer to the pasuk? Just the words with the, where, you know, if it's dotted. Just the words where the dots appear? Yeah. So here all the words are dotted, all the letters are dotted. Yeah, actually, we have extra dots. Am I we have extra. Oh. Um, let me make it a little bit bigger. Does that help? Yes. Need to yeah. It. Okay. I think so. Um, so this leads to, you know, especially in this, well, I'll get back to this sentence in a while, but because it's talking about that which is hidden, that which is not hidden, which is concealed, not concealed. Um, and so since there are all these dots, the rabbi suggests that something is hidden here or something is hidden with all these dotted words that we have to discover. Okay. Um, so there, there are those that suggest that all the different um, interpretations of the 10 passages, um, the 10 dotted passages, have an identical point of departure. That is, there's a gap between the overt and covert letter levels, which find expression in the dots. For ex let me give you a couple examples. When we have in, um, in Bereshit 33, which is the next sentence here, where Aesop is, you know, goes to, uh, he embraces, um, let me get so you can see the English. Aesop is um, greeting Yaakov, right? And it says, he ran to greet him, he embraced him, and falling on his neck, he kissed him, and they wept. Okay? So here it says, and he kissed him, and that's the dotted version, right? So they look at this and say, well, if it's dotted, then there was something in that way that they kissed. Um, and they say there is a um, two ways of looking at it. Is the uh, let me find the note here. You know, we're saying he kissed him, but is it a is it a way that you know, as as we would say, is it a way that you uh, you greet your uh, your great aunt, or is it the way that you greet your lover? Uh, in other words, uh, is it a, a deep embracing type of kiss or is it one, okay, let's give him a peck on the cheek and, and, you know, and call it a kiss. Um, 
And that's what the, the dots come to bring us to look and see if we want to, you know, which interpretation we want to want to use on that. Um, do, Mark, do we know if that's Asa, the one kissing, or the other way around? Because I can imagine maybe it means Asa was kissing him and like rolling his eyes at the same time. You got it. There's that's a, that's the whole discussion here. It could yeah. be ya it could be Yaakov who's kissing and rolling his eyes. That's true too. Yeah. There's another interpretation that he bit him instead of kissed him. <laughs> well he intended to. Okay. But didn't. Exactly. You guys are falling right into the to the the trend that these uh, rabbis are are telling you to. We're looking at it and we're saying, hey, this could be a whole bunch of different meanings. The point is, if the dots weren't there, we probably wouldn't get into this deep of a discussion just on that one word. Well, it's ambiguous with or without dots. Why shouldn't we get into the discussion? I'm not saying you shouldn't. The I'm point. Saying, <laughs> I'm saying that it's, that it's intensified because ah. of the dots. Okay. Okay. So we're saying the Torah really knows that it's ambiguous. Right? Uh, I'm saying, I'm saying that this. I'm going to come to a different way of looking at it. So I'm not going to give it okay. different, you know. But those who feel that the dots were given at Sinai will agree with exactly what you're saying. Um, and but why and in the, more, the last more example. Mort, why, why, and maybe you're going to get to this. If you are, then please go ahead later. Um, wh why the placement of the dots in the places where they're placed as opposed to other places in the Torah where there are similar interpretations on certain, the meaning of certain words, but they don't have dots. That's exactly the issue. Uh, <clears throat> Now, ultimately, that's the main question. Why are these dots there in the first place? Uh, and why are they on these words? And, you know, you know uh, let me first, you know, discuss this last one here from, from uh, Bray Sheet. Um, the, the one where, um, the angels come and appear to, uh, to Abraham and say, where is Sarah, your wife? And we look at, we look at it and say, well, maybe the angels appeared as angels. Maybe they appeared as something else. And there, you know, and that, that's how it is looked at and to see, uh, you know, really what they're doing there. But if we want to, I want to sum up this whole approach by saying that the sages viewed these, dar, these dots as a mark intimating to the reader to expound the event and understand what was special about it. Okay? That they found something, the dots caused them to look at these, these sentences and say, hey, there's something else going on here. Uh, what is it? What do we need to discover? Okay, any questions on that part of it? Um, well, just a comment. It, it, <clears throat> it seems to me that, that maybe um, they're there because really as a red flag, as opposed to other passages where something is inherently ambiguous that maybe these are passages where we might not um, instinctively see the ambiguity in it and the dots are there to kind of say, hey, you know, hold on, there's something here you may not have noticed. Right, okay. That's, that's according to this view. But there's another view. And we're gonna say that the rabbis who held this view, the second view, thought there was something doubtful, not vague, but doubtful about the words. Their, um, uh, 
there, there, uh, actually, I'm going to take this off. Okay. All right. Uh, there, there are, um, where am I here? There are some that look and say, why are these dots there? Why are over these words? What's going on here? And some people come along and say, well, in some of these, many of these words, uh, not only are they ambiguous, but in some cases superfluous. Um, that, um, that if we took those words out, we could even make sense of the sentence uh, without them. So the, the, the explanation is some scribe came along and said, I'm not sure that word he actually belongs there, or there might be a mistake in the way that word is written and dotted it to, to, uh, to bring attention to it. Maybe something was corrected, maybe it wasn't, but um, the next scribe, scribe came along and said, well, there are dots here. I'm not sure exactly why they're dots, but if they're there, I've got to copy it and put it into the next one. And there we have the dots. So these guys, you know, really uh, look at it actually the the fourth sentence that I had on the sheet which I closed was the uh, was a sentence from um, from by Midbar where um, it said motion Aaron was uh, recording uh, the census of the males that uh, came you know that were uh, counted in that chapter uh, and the point is, at the beginning of the chapter, where they're told to do the sentence, it's only Moshe that's told to do it. So the dots appear above the name of Aaron because why is he there? Uh, he wasn't in the original instructions to do the sentence, but all of a sudden he's doing the reporting. So the First, the second uh, interpretation of these dots say that this is all part of the scribal tradition. The scribes had, had you know, pointed these out. So if we come and we see the difference between the two views, it is the difference between the plain sense of a text and a homiletical ter interpretation. Um, or it could be said, the difference between the rabbinic world and the academic world. The rabbis wanted to come up and teach a lesson. The academics said, ah, and you know, look, and there's a plain and simple meeting. All right. There was a article that was written about 40, 50 years ago um, by Rab Rabbi Mordechai Brewer. And he said, the Holy One, blessed be he, did not give his Torah to scribes who are ministering angels, rather to scribes of flesh and blood who write his Torah to human beings who reads its letters. And this is the way of human beings, they are prone to err or to be, different or to be of different opinions as to the tradition of the text as written and as read. These things apply to every verse, every word, every letter appearing in the version of the Bible in our hands. So, in these cases, he's saying, we're, we're going to take it, is that it wasn't necessarily given by God uh, at Sinai, but human error has crept into the text. And just as we have some words that have a kareel tiv, you know, the way it's written and the way that it's re uh, read, there are other differences. Uh, and it's caused by human, you know, human interaction with the text. Uh, I would uh, 
Mike, to put it this way, because um, I have a third opinion. Um, have any of you ever written with a quill? You made me do it. I made you do it. Yeah, we've signed, signed our names with a quill. Yeah, yeah. You know, when, okay. we do, when we do get and we do it with a quill, right? Uh, and yes, you know, I, when I write a get, the whole thing is written with a quill. And uh, that's the tradition that we have of doing it. You know, you soon discover that when you write with a quill, you cannot always control where the ink is going. Um, personally, I'm very convinced that these dots originated by somebody splattering while using a quill. <laughs> um, which I think falls in line with the second opinion here that, you know, it's uh, there were errors there, but I think it's the dots that were more often than not that came into the error. Um, however, it is a still a good, um, you know, scholarly exercise, or maybe just an intellectual exercise to try to figure out what they mean. And um, that's why I thought it's still worthy of discussion. But ultimately, um, since nobody really knows exactly why they're there, nobody knows exactly what it is, I'll let you to take which of the three opinions that I've given you with the, which you want to accept. And if you think that some other words in the Torah should have these dots, in your own personal copy, I invite you to put some dots in. And if the next generation comes and copies you, well, that's on you. Okay. There are there are okay. There are, there are endless um, links. I did a search in Google for why the dots above words in the Torah, and there's page after page after page of of different kinds of explanations. Even some from a guy who's like a messianic interpreter of <laughs> Torah. So I guess well, you got to watch what you're reading. No, I, those who do that type of interpretation, you know, the Messianics, the Kabbalists, they're the ones that really love it because they're the ones that are going to say, hey, it's there for a reason and we have to find out what it is. And you can see the way we did it when we discussed the first couple ones, how we were going all over the place. Uh, you looked at the sentence from this week's Parsha. And I, I, I didn't give an exact kind. I think we had four or five different interpretations. Um, Chaim thought it was uh, that he was actually going to bite him. Where did Chaim go? Okay, Chaim's not here. Um, you know, and other things. And, and fine, you know, we can't say those are wrong, but we don't know that they're absolutely right either. And, it's, you know, and um, I'm sure that the, in those thousands of sources you find there might be a little bit of different duplication. But yes, there's a lot written. There's a lot going on uh, on what it is. Are there, um, are there any interpretations that perhaps Moshe, when he was given the entire Torah, maybe wasn't sure of a particular word? And so for further reference, he decided, I'll put these dots here and perhaps that'll remind me to look back on this. OK. Yeah. That's, we're going to get into those situations like my son reminded me the uh, last week. Um, you know, this rabbi comes along and gives an interpretation of the text. Oh, no, no. A, a guy goes to a rabbi and he says, you know, gives him a situation and he wants it done in a certain way. And the rabbi says, you're right. The other guy comes along and gives an opposite interpretation and said, and the rabbi says to him, you're right. right. The third guy comes along and says, how can this one be right and that one be right? And the rabbi looks at him and says, you're right. <laughs> uh, does that sum it up? Yeah, uh, Mort, there's four shalshelets in the Torah. Shalshelet is one of the trucks. 
you know, right. like, and it's yeah. an three, unusual three term. Pozaire. It's actually three pazers, yeah. and that's it, that's why the name of it is Shalshelet. It has the word Shalosh in it. Right. Right. So it's three pazers, right? So, it, and the the question is. What is the significance of those words that you sing with the shalshelet, which I've always been, uh, um, you know, um, I've always thought about since I was a little kid and I started reading Torah. Um, Rothman tells me, he says, because it's like, because whatever the, uh, whatever it is, don't believe, don't believe it. In other words, um, so he says this, of course, right where uh, Joseph is with Potiphar's wife, wife, right? And Potiphar, and it says, you know, she tried to uh, come on to him. I don't know the exact words, but she tried to come on to him, and, and Joseph would have none of it and uh, like ran away. So there's a there's a shall shell it over Joseph left. Yeah. It turns out <laughs> Rothman believes that where Joseph didn't leave, <laughs> Joseph was there and stayed. You know, who did, yeah. you know. All right, forget yeah. me for being sad. The way no, the way I heard it is that it took him a while to get around <laughs> the leaving. <laughs> that he then, uh, wasn't and then I, sure. I, so that I have was, a that was fun. I remember. The placement of the truck is also a way of interpreting the text. Yeah. Um, I have. You know, it's punctuation. And yeah. Sometimes, you know, when I was working in the court reporting school, we had this one, we always, every, with every class we had this discussion um, on this one case that came out of Florida where a murder conviction was overturned and sent back for retrial because of the placement of a comma in the transcript. Um, you know, and it changed the interpretation of, well, it actually changed the, the interpretation of the sentence as to whether the uh, man, the, uh, the man who was convicted was uh, carrying a weapon or not. Um, so, which, uh, which I'm saying that to, to point out that the trop is also a way that the, uh, who was it that put in that trop? I forgot when it was done. Uh, a way of interpreting the text. And yes, they had something about those, what's it, four different times that they wanted to call attention to that word. Well, they couldn't put in the dots. They couldn't put dots in it because those people who say it was given in Sinai, they wouldn't allow it. So you put in a shelf shell. Uh, I think it falls into the same category. Uh, I think it's open for a lot of interpretations. I, I think all the interpretate, frankly, I think all the interpretations are valid. Um, we have more, it's okay, hi. We have, uh, we have, oh, we have interpretation, at least there are only four shelf cells in the whole Torah, but three of them were signs that something's going to happen. The uh oh sign. <laughs> it's like there's trouble ahead. Okay. All right. The fourth one I'm not sure about, but these three of those three of those times you see it, they're mostly in um, I think Bereshit and um, uh, Shemot, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's the uh oh symbol. Again, that, don't fall asleep. That's a way of explaining it. Uh, that's in which way? I don't think it's the, I don't think it's wrong, but I also don't think it's the only way. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think, I think that's the conclusion. I've come up with all these different right. things, with the different trucks, why they're in, in different places. Um, yeah. If, if we want to come along and give a different interpretation of the text and move some of the truck, uh, just get a committee to go along with you and, and let them <laughs> publish it in some journal. Uh, yeah. Or, or next time you publish a um, a, uh, a chumash, put your way of putting the trump in. Uh, right. Well, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm saying this half jokingly, but yeah. I really think that there's an element of, of truth in that, um, mm -hmm. because I think this is the way we come about with some of these traditions. Yeah. There, there's a whole 
article written in 2003 on the meaning of Shalshalet on JPS really? website by Ismar Shur. Uh, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get, you can just, all you have to do is, that, that was from the search of uh, Shalshalet Torah truck. And it's like. I know, they're out amazing. there. It's amazing. They're out there, you know, the dots, the shalshelets. Yeah. Um, and, and how about those, those trucks? If you look at a listing of the truck, there's a whole bunch of them at the end that we never pay attention to because we, we very rarely come We're across them. Find them, yeah. 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 What, what are they for? You know, I've been teaching bar mitzvah kids for what, 60 years, and I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well. In any event. So, <laughs> thanks for this, Mort. That was great. Well, yes, thank you so much. That you, really Mark. was fun. Thank That's you. Fun. Oh, yeah, have a good library day. Send the, uh, right. the link if anybody wants to read. Uh, oh, how nice. Yeah, thank, you. Nice. thank you, David. Sure. Thank you, David. I definitely can use Google and they can find all this stuff. Yes, cough, Mort. Yes, your cough, Mort. Have a good day, everybody. All right. Happy uh, holiday. Happy holiday. Yeah. Happy holiday, Mort. Take care. See you guys. Thanks for everything. Uh, I was. David, nice if I have any problems, you'll be hearing from me. I'm, I'm going to install a uh, um, a hotline in your in your I, house. Are you. Oh. God, once I get finished with this music, uh, I dearly love Yosef, but he assumes that everybody knows as much as he does. Yes. And, yeah, and so when it's he not, gives directions, he assumes that it's obvious. Right. Okay. Anyway, yeah. so okay. far, uh, so uh, good. <laughs> okay, all right. Jenny, sounds great. Jenny, I'll be yeah, and thank you so, so for all your help so far. <laughs> yeah, Jenny, I've, been, I've talked to you during the next couple of days. Yeah, yeah, I keep uh, asking, uh, I asked Annie on Shabbat when we're supposed to come do the mantles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we well, have to work something out. I'll talk to you during the week. All right. Okay. Tonight or tomorrow. David, okay. No problem. We're here without ending for everybody. What? Yeah, what? what? Uh, no, you you have to end it. I I oh, think I, we're I, ready I, though. Can, oh yeah. I can leave. I can leave and let you end it. I I can just leave. Here. All right. We can. Uh, yeah. Happy shout out, everybody. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. All right.